Okay, it's me. I'm going to go over this uh, four-dimensional random walk program. It's actually one through four dimensions, uh, including self-avoiding walks. It's a little not so great because, you know, I'm not the best programmer, but I want to explain how you everything works. Okay, so I got a couple programs to show you. The first one is just your plain program. Let me just run this one. This is, uh, let's just run it and go over uh, how it works. So this shows uh, random walk in 2D. That's what it is. That's where it started, and it's I picked the number of steps. And then this is the uh, the position of the x and y coordinate as a function of time. Um, so you can rerun it again and show what happens. But that's fine. Okay. And then it prints the final position in 4D, actually. Okay, so let's just go through this line by line. This first one, line 3, sets up a graph. And then these are the three curves for the four different dimensions. Um, X, Y, Z, and I call the last one W because I guess I'm not very creative. Uh, and then I need to start with the position at 0, 0, 0, 0, so W, 0. Okay, this part right here, this path. So a self-avoiding walk is a random walk that doesn't cross its own path. So path is a list of positions that it's been to. And so every time it moves, I'm going to add to this path. I go ahead and add the first position to the path 0, 0, 0, 0 uh, as a vector, as a list of a vector plus that one scalar value w. Um, there's probably a better way to do four dimensional vectors. I tried playing around with it, but I couldn't get it to work, so I just, I just figured this works. Um, so that's what the path is. It's a list um, that I add the position to every time I move. Okay, ball and b start are just the spheres that move. Uh, make sure it has a trail. Um, N is just how many steps you've moved. This in this is the important part here. Instead of having to go through and change a program, this is where you change the dimensions you want to move in. Uh, so if I change this to three dimensions, then it will run in three dimensions. See, that's three dimensional. Okay. Uh, so let's put this back at two. And then this NDS is the number of choices that you have. If you have two dimensions, you can move in four different ways. If you have three dimensions, you can move in six different ways. Color max is how I deal with the fourth dimension. Instead of displaying something moving in the fourth dimension, I just change the color of the object from red to blue. And so max is the maximum position. So the blue color goes from zero to one. And so color max says, if you move 10 in the W direction, that would be the most blue you could get. Past that, it doesn't get any bluer, just because I don't think you could tell the difference. It doesn't really matter anyway. This is the other important two things. These are the important two things right here. This is the number of dimensions, and this one right here, saw equals false. This says do not avoid, this is not a self-avoiding walk. Okay, let me just go ahead and change this. We're in two dimensions. Change this to true and run it, and you can see what a self-avoiding walk does. It got stuck already. That's weird. It shouldn't be stuck. And try that again. Okay, there it goes. So you see how it's not crossing its path. It usually will get stuck at some point. I need to change. It shouldn't have gotten stuck there either. Um, but that's weird. Okay, it can get stuck. So I'll show you how that works. Okay, where were we? Saw. So, okay. Uh, def in path. This is a function right here. This says take your position and I have it called tr for temp r position and tw for temp w position and then the list path of all the things. And I probably shouldn't have named that the same in the function but you know I told you I'm a terrible, pro terrible programmer. This goes through each element in the path and sees if the new temporary vector has the same coordinates as each element in that path. And if it does, then it returns true. And if it goes through and doesn't find one that matches, then it's false. So this says, is I'm going to make a temporary move. Is it in that path already? If it is, I need to not do that move. And that's for the self-avoiding walk. Um, okay, so here's your main meat right here. This says do 100 steps. Uh, the rate just shows you how fast to do the program. Uh, so again, I'm, I need to make a temporary move. And that's what this temp move and temp wr. Um, and then I'm, I need to know, did it move? Because that's important. 
And this is, if it's not saw, then it's it's easy. If it's a, a, a normal walk, then all I do is make a random number from zero to one. And then if it's, if it's in two dimensions, if it's less than one over two, go to the left. If it's greater than one over two, go to the right. And this is the same thing for all the dimensions up to eight. So it just, the way I did this, it breaks it into, you know, a number between uh, one divided by the possible choices. And then it, it just moves in that direction. Um, so that's that. And then that gives you your temp position. This, I don't know why it even checks if it's in the path, it doesn't matter, but I did it anyway. And then I actually move it. So you move the position of the ball uh, and then you change the color of the ball. And then this just makes a graph, so that's it. Now, if it's self-avoiding, then you have to do something else. I do the same thing. I get a temp number, and then I pick a move, a temporary move. I don't actually move. But then I check right here if it's in that path. And if it is in that path, then I start over, okay? If it's not in the path, then I move it. So that's what that does down there. Uh, and then there's a try count of 10. That means if it, if it tries more than 10 times and can't move, then I say, I got to quit, okay? Let's try that again because I didn't see this got stuck dude here. It should be, yeah, see, now it's the try count down there. <laughs> so it got stuck. See, but, oh, it's up here. Is that it right there? Yeah, it got stuck right there. That's definitely stuck, okay? And then you can see the position. Okay, so let's just do this in uh, a self-avoiding walk in three dimensions just for fun. Or we should do four, too. So there you can see it is self-avoiding. It doesn't cross this path. And then here are the, the three dimensions. So that's pretty cool. And then in four dimensions, it does, even for a self-avoiding walk, it might look like it crosses its path, but it doesn't. Because see, it's changing colors. Uh, from red to blue and blue to red, you can see that fourth dimension is a black line right here. And let's see if it looks like it crosses its path. Yeah, it does look like it, but really what happened is it went into the fourth dimension and then back, and then it came back to that path. So it's not actually crossing its path, uh, but it didn't get stuck. Okay, uh, let's move to the next program. Uh, so this is the same idea, except I don't, I don't move the, the object. I just calculate the position so I can make a graph. What I want to do is to run it a whole bunch of times, let's say 500 times, and get the average distance it traveled uh, for some number of runs. And I want to do that for both the saw and the normal, which I call in saw. So this is just this deaf random walk. It, it's the same thing. It says how many steps you want to do, how many dimensions, and do you want to do saw or non-saw. And then it does the exact same program but in a function. And all the stuff is the same, except it does not move the object. And at the end, it returns the total distance from the starting point. And you see here, I had to calculate that starting distance. Since it's a four-dimensional vector, I have to include this uh, fourth dimension. But it's still x squared, square root of x squared, plus y squared, plus z squared, plus w squared. So now, that's my function. It returns one value for how far it went. Uh, so what I do is... I have, and I'm not sure what I'm doing here. N, N is something. The number, that's the number of steps. That's the number of times I want to do that. That's what that is. The number of times I want to run that path. If you run it once, you may get any distance. But if you run it 500 times, you're going to get an average distance that makes sense. Uh, so this is the number of steps I start with. I'm start with 10 steps. And then the step, step size d step so i go 10 steps then 30 then 50 then 70 and so forth until i get to 500 so i calculate the one i do that i want to do let's say 10 steps i need to do each one 500 times so that's what this is right here so now here's the actual random walk and it gives a distance here's the actual other random walk and then i calculate i add it to the sum and calculate the average at the end here's the average distance and i plot that and then I just do it again and again and again until you get, and it take it can take a while to run, be careful. So I already ran it. And then here, this is two dimensions. This is self-avoiding walk, and this is uh, not self-avoiding walk. So the self-avoiding walk starts off getting, getting further away, but then it gets stuck. So you can't really get further away than about 10 steps. 
uh, over there. But this one is a good function you could fit to. Whew, okay, so that is a brief overview of the uh, random walk program in one through four dimensions in, I'll include, and uh, self-avoiding walks. I'll include these two programs, uh, links to these two programs in the stuff below. The end.